when Jesus had spoken these words, he went out with his disciples across the brook Kedron, where there was a garden which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place, for Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas, having procured a band of soldiers and some officers from the chief priests and the Pharisees, went there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that would happen to him, came forward and said to them, Whom do you seek? Then answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said to them, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. When Jesus said to them, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. So he asked them again, whom do you seek? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. So if you seek me, let these men go. And this was to fulfill the word that he had spoken. Of those whom you gave me, I have lost not one. When Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servants and cut off his right ear, and the servant's name was Malchus. So Jesus said to Peter, put your sword into his sheath. Shall I not drink the cup that the Father has given me? So the band of soldiers and their captain and the officers, somebody say officers, so the band of soldiers and their captain and the officers, somebody say officers, of the Jews arrested Jesus and bound him. So, the band of soldiers and their captain and the who of the Jews arrested Jesus and bound him. This Sunday morning, I, I want to preach from the subject, Lie PD, <laughs> Jerusalem County. That's what I want to preach about this Sunday morning. Live PD, Jerusalem County. Most of you now are familiar with this television show on A&E called Live PD. I'm sure it stands for Live Police Department. It began last October. As a matter of fact, its first show was October the 28th of 2016, airing on A&E. It is a show that depicts live police action as it is going down. Unlike the show Cops, which is recorded and edited and made to look like it wants to make it to look, ain't no editing live PD. Ain't no change in the story on live PD. Whether you're an NBA player or not, if you get caught, you just get caught on camera. This show chronicles the sheriff departments and police departments of eight counties, including our very own beloved county of Richland County, South Carolina. And many of us are aware now of Live PD because of something that happened on Saturday, July the 28th, or sorry, Saturday, July the 8th of this year. On Saturday evening, July the 8th of this year, our county and our country was rocked and shocked by what we saw happening live on this television show called Live PD. On that evening, one of our sheriff's, deputy sheriff's, was called to a party out on North Main Street somewhere. And after he gets to the party, a man jumps in his car and flees the party. And that officer begins to follow him and chase him. And after a 90 mile per hour chase, this is what happened. Play the tape. After a 90 mile per hour chase, 
this van flips on its side. And what rocks and shocks this country is not the fact that there's a police chase, not the fact that this car flips, but the fact that the driver of the car emerges from the car with a baby in his hand. We are shocked because the car flips. We, we are shocked because he walks out unscathed. We are shocked because he has the power to even leave what doesn't seem without a scratch. We are shocked because he emerges with his baby in his hands, and we are shocked by the fact that he thinks he can get away and fight an officer with a baby in one hand and pushing the officer away with the other hand. Now, adrenaline will work. For a while, but it ain't going to last forever. We could not believe the executive producer of the show says, I, I, I was spit even watching it live to see this father put his child in such danger. I'm sure the sheriff knows, but we don't know why he ran. I don't know. No need to even speculate. It doesn't even matter why he ran from the cops. But we are also shocked by the fact that in 2017, this trip ends not with a trip to the county jail. It did not end with a trip to the county morgue. Right. We have to commend our sheriff. We have to commend Officer Mastriani who was the arresting officer. We have to commend him for good training because we've seen on the streets of America these situations go the other way. Whether it was Michael Ferguson or Michael Brown in Ferguson, Missouri, or Eric Gardner in Long Island, New York, whether it was Philando Castile in Minneapolis, Minnesota, or whether it was Walter Scott right down the street in North Charleston, South Carolina. We've seen many of these situations go the other way where the victim, the suspect, or the criminal does not end up in the jail but ends up in the county more. And I thank our sheriff and I thank Chris Masriani for doing everything that he could do. Number one, to make sure that that baby was okay. And then to make a legal arrest. But we've seen again so many of these situations go the wrong way. And I know especially we as African Americans can debate and have different opinions about these situations and many lives have been lost recklessly. But many of these situations, except the Philando Castile situation, begin because of resisting arrest, where the person who's being arrested does not comply with the commands of the officers. And I know what happens is because the person we believe is erroneously and incorrectly killed, we seem to wipe away everything that happens before when they ain't listening and complying. Everybody did not grow up with a defense attorney as their daddy. But everybody got a grandma that told you to say, yes, sir. No, sir. Yes, ma'am. And no, ma'am. When he come to your window, have your license and your registration ready, and then put your hands on 10 and 2. But we live in a society of 50 shades of gray, where we believe everything is debatable, and that an officer has no right to even ask you your name. I'm going to show you three shining examples of how not to act if you ever pulled over, or God forbid, arrested.
Listen, now where's all these books? ASAP. In scene one, before the officer reaches the window, the driver's already hostile. What you pull me over for? That ain't the right word to use when an officer comes to your window. Whether you are what we call, unfortunately, driving while black, he pulled you over, and you must comply. In that second video, I had to cut it off real quick because if you've ever seen that video on YouTube, you will see that as soon as they let go of his hand, he pulls out a gun and shoots them directly. Now, of course, there are some bad cops, but I believe, Sheriff, that every good cop that leaves their home and their family, their number one goal is to make it back home to their family. They never know what we are carrying or what is about to happen. And they know that if we can't simply comply with giving them their license and registration and giving them a correct name, that this situation is about to turn for the worse. And as you saw, this guy is resisting arrest. Once a officer says that you are under arrest and pulls out handcuffs, it's over. They don't. Comply. Now, this third video we all saw last week. This happened after the Lord told me to preach this fifth Sunday. Uh, we saw in this last video some teens uh, cutting grass in a highfalutin neighborhood, going door to door. And I don't know if someone called on them because they're young African-American teens in the community, but they're just cutting grass, or maybe the officer was just patrolling the neighborhood. And he simply asked the young man his name, and he talks back. What you asking me my name for? I don't have an ID. And it begins to escalate. And what is so interesting about it is that then his boy comes up, who ain't nobody talking to, ain't nobody concerned about, and gets in the midst and now wants to be his attorney. <laughs> and the officer says, you heard it, put your hands down. It is the same scene of John. Chapter 18, it is the same exact scene in John 18. Whenever there is a predicament or ever there is a crisis in the land and you need a solution, just go to the word of God. Anything that ever goes on on your job, in your house, in your home, if you're looking for an answer to the situation, the only thing you got to do is go to the word of God. This video happened after the sermon was written. And the same exact situation that plays out in that video already played out in John 18. <laughs> On that fretful Thursday, Jesus and his disciples were up 
on a mountain called Gethsemane. Jesus had taken all of them, but he left nine down at the base of the mountain. And he only takes three of them up in the mountain. And recognizing that Jesus and you don't need a whole entourage, especially when you need to have some quiet time with you and the Lord. Jesus also knows that the more company you have, the more problems you will have. You all laughed at me, and my wife laughed at me when I told y'all that when Ian, my son, gets his first car, it's going to be a two-seater. Because ain't nobody going to be in the back seat trying to tell him to go this way and that way and have drugs on them. If we know somebody's one or two people, we ain't got to worry. Who in the back seat? Talking about, can you drop us off over here? Uh-uh. And I need to know who the other person in the seat. He only takes three of his friends up on that hill. And you know the story of those three friends. Go to sleep on them. But even your best friends might fall asleep on you every now and then. They ain't going to be up all hours of night waiting for you to tweet or post or call or text them. And all of a sudden, Judas and some officers of the law show up. And even before the officer can ask Jesus his name, he says, who you looking for? And when the officer says, we're looking for Jesus of Nazareth, unlike the boy in the video, Jesus says, I am the one you're looking for. My name is Jesus, and I am of Nazareth. If he had driver's license, he would have given him his driver's license and his registration. He complied with the officer. He didn't back talk. He didn't say, what do you want? He already knew that they were coming. And you should know when you're driving 100 miles per hour on 77 and you see blue lights that they come. Don't be worried. I wonder who they I wonder. Pull over. They're coming for you. And praise God that he's about to do a miracle in your life. And then... Just like in this scene we just saw, Peter starts popping off at the mouth. <laughs> Always your boy on the passenger side. Want to start popping off at the mouth. Ain't got a GED, but want to be your lawyer outside. And the boy in the video asking, what you stopping him for? What you bothering us for? He ain't asked you nothing. And here comes Peter popping off at the mouth and gets out his knife and cuts one of the officers. One of God's men who's carrying a knife cuts off the ear of one of the officers. And what does Jesus do in response? He tells his boy, put your knife up and shut up. Because the more you talk, the worse this situation is about to become. He complies with the officer. He tells the officer the truth. And what you don't know and what your teens and everybody who hears this needs to know, it is unlawful to not obey commands of a law enforcement officer and to lie to them. It is unlawful. And I know we're raising this Google generation who's been trained for some reason, Baron, to question everything. But not with a badge. And not with a gun. When he asks you your name, you give him your full government name. <laughs> While they're outside, Jesus is respectful toward the officers while they're outside. He tells his friend, shut up, chill out. While they're outside, he does not challenge their authority, even though he has all authority. While they're outside, he obeys and he complies. While they're outside, he holds his peace. While they're outside, he keeps his hands on 10 and 2 and does not make a quick move. While they're 
outside. He does what they ask him to do. Put your hands behind your back and say yes, sir, and no, sir, while they're outside. He obeys. Oh, but when they get inside. He tells the judge, the prosecutor, and the bailiff, you have no power. When he was outside, he was quiet, complacent, and obedient. But when he got inside, that is when he pleaded his case. And that is my only real point that I have for you and for everybody you tell about this sermon today. Take a lesson from Jesus. While you're outside, you don't say nothing. But when you get inside, get you a good lawyer and let him talk for you. Because nothing is going to be solved Outside, if you want to live, and maybe that's what I need to put a quote in the meeting and say, if you want to live, if you want to see another day and you don't want to escalate the situation, if you want to see another day, the time and the place ain't outside on the streets of America. But when Jesus gets inside, he tells that judge by the name of Pilate, Whatever you say. He didn't answer any of the questions. While he was outside, he answered every question. But when he got inside, he didn't answer no question. Because he realized once he got inside that the judge really didn't have no power over him. When he got inside, he was able to plead his case. And you know how the story goes. He pled his case. And dad, the judge, made what we call a directed verdict. He didn't allow it to go to the jury. He didn't allow any closing statements. Antoine, he did what we call a directed verdict, where he freed the criminal right then and there for lack of evidence. A lot in his team weren't on this case. The prosecutor didn't, 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 didn't have enough evidence to charge him with treason and sedition. And so Judge Pilate frees him because there's no evidence to charge him, especially to crucify him. But unlike what happens in modern day criminal justice, the jury gets upset because they're released. I guess they enjoyed their little ham sandwich for lunch and their little free parking downtown. But the jury is upset because they're released from jury duty. And after they free Jesus, the jurors meet him on the outside of the courthouse. And it ain't the judge that sentences him. Unlike our criminal justice program, it is the jury that sentences him. And our, our, our people, and really all people, if you really want to be truthful about it, we have a history of protesting injustice in America. Whether it's the founding Europeans that protested the injustice of the king in England, we have a history of resistance in America. Whether it is Denmark Vesey or Nat Turner during Negro chattel slavery, we have a history of resistance in our country. And, and that is why we might see some of the resistance and the hostile nature and the hostile talk to officers of the law right now because there is a history of resistance in our country. But again, Jesus teaches us that there is a time and a place. There is a time and a place if you want to live to see another day. And that jury caught him on the outside. He was no longer resisting, but the jury caught him on the outside, and they say, crucify him. Crucify him. Now, you might say to yourself, well, it don't look like he won. If he's still sentenced to death. Didn't you declare unto me that if we want to live again, that we need to comply, and he complied, and that if you get a good lawyer, everything's going to be all right? So why is he hanging up on the cross? 
outside. If you tell me, preacher, that uh, don't say nothing on the outside, why is the one who did no wrong hanging up and hanging out outside? If you say that he won his case inside and that the jury let him come I in, mean, the judge let him go on the inside, why is he hanging up on the outside? Well, you know the reason. When they took him out, he brought me in. When they hung him up, he sent me up. When they bruised him, then he healed me. He bore all of my affliction when he hung up on that cross. And because he died up on that cross, I can live again. And that is the irony of the system. Because he died, I can live. Because he died on the outside, I can live now on the inside. Because he didn't say a word on the outside, he still died on the outside. But because he died on the outside, I can live one day on the inside. And you do know where I'm going to live, don't you? It's a place called heaven. Huh. I said, you do know where I'm going to live. I, I don't know where you're going to live, but I, I plan to live behind some gates. And the gates ain't Alvin S. Glenn Detention Center. There are some gates. I said, there are some gates on the other side of the Jordan. And because, Sheriff, he died on the outside, he has changed the meaning of live PD. <laughs> on A&E, it stands for live police department. But because he died, anybody know he died? I said, anybody know he died? I said, anybody know he died? I said, he died for you, and he died for me. And when he died, he changed the name Live PD so that you might live past death. I said, for every Christian, I said, for every believer, it don't stand for Live Police Department. It stands for Live and Live Past Death. If you know Jesus in the pardoning of your sins, if you know him as your lawyer, you will live past death. Come on, give God praise today. Come on, give God praise. If you know it's the truth, that if you sign up with Jesus, keep your mouth shut on the outside, get you a good lawyer, you'll, you, you'll live past death. Make sure you tweet this out right and tell the story right. On the outside, keep your mouth shut. Be respectful of these officers. They want to live just as much as you want to live. God forbid if you are arrested, put your hands behind your back and shut your mouth. Until my daddy get there. <laughs> Tell him I'm your pastor here, give you a discount. <laughs> and then let somebody plead your case on the inside. Yes, sir. <laughs> and then if you want to really live past death, why don't you come on in today? If you want to really live past death, why don't you come on in today?